Federal Executive Council don't approve contracts for Bida Sachi Pyroko Road. And President Sidon Tokuse begin no day between Buhari and Osibanjo. Federal government now they host a workshop to move anti-corruption campaign for inside the country. And CAF don't appoint Senegalese referee for the match between Super Eagles and Benin. Good afternoon and welcome. This is now as it take happen for Inside Wazobia Max TV. My name is Adati Omukwe. On top of the first story where we say we carry come today, Federal Executive Council now will be fake. Where we say Vice President Yemi Oshibanjo now in lead for Inside the Meeting. They don't approve 58 billion naira for the contract to complete the Bida Sachi Peroko Road and the Nupeku Patagi Bridge across River Niger, Wailing Kwara and Niger State. Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, now announced this one give state house to real people after the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting on Wednesday. Him talk say the project gets timeline of 30 days. As it be so, Gafa Shola talk will say work they go on now to make sure say drivers and including passengers now go enjoy the road, especially this celebration season way with the enter. Sachi Nupeku Bida Road. It's Bida Sachi Nupeku Road, actually, pardon me. And uh, we've attached uh, a bridge, uh, the Nupeku Patigi Bridge across the river Niger to link Niger and Kwara states together and also facilitate connectivity from southwest to the north central and the north of Nigeria. Uh, it's an old contract, actually, it was awarded in 2013 terminated for non-performance, uh, re-evaluated. It didn't have a bridge then, we've added the bridge now. Approved now for 58.488 billion, and uh, it's expected to take 30 months. So that's it really, thank you very much. Still as any young for there, Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, will be Issa Pentami. He talks a fact now appreciates the effort of one group of Nigerians where we say they carry first position for one digital startup for inside United Arab Emirates. Able to Jitex with 10 startups. One of the startups we attended the event with is called Chiniki Guts. Chiniki Guts, it is an artificial intelligence application which has been developed in order to monitor, track, and report suspicious activities in public places like shopping mall, office space, and any, anything related to that. So this is the artificial intelligence that has been developed by one young man from Kazana State by name Abdul Hakim Bashir. And it emerged the global best in the most celebrated and biggest category that is artificial intelligence. 740, 750 participants participated in that category from 73 countries. And he happens to be the best among the 750 from 73 countries. We feel this is something that should be celebrated by all Nigerians. And this tells us that we have a capacity of in the future time of being not only an ICT consumer, but rather a digital producer and importer globally. And for inside the next story, President Sinal don't come out to say that story where we say they spread up and down, say we get day between the office of the president and the office of the vice president, say it no be true at all at all. As a matter be, senior special assistant to the president, on top National Assembly matter, where be Babajide, Omar Wari, and Umar Yakub. Now then come out now, come clear this fake news, give, uh, as they young, give uh, to we people for inside Abuja. Senator Omar Mwari come talk, say the constitution give the president better power to work from anywhere where in the. And as they see the yearning talk say the matter they different from that of former president Umar Yaradua and the vice president Good Luck Jonathan. Where be said the before president Yaradua no fit performing official duties sake of in body matter. By any way or manner the office of the vice president has been um, relegated. The, as you all know, the position of the president of Nigeria, he could work wherever he is at any point in time, whether he's in the country or he's outside 
the country. And the most celebrated case, the most celebrated instance was when President Shehunsa Yaradwa took ill, took, was sick actually, and he could not um, um, communicate with the National Assembly before he traveled. And he was gone for a very long time. And the National Assembly had to find a way of working around the provision of the Constitution to ensure that um, executive power goes to the Vice President. I don't think there is any way whatsoever that the position of the Vice President has been relegated. And I think the President is performing his functions where he is. Still on top of the matter, Babajide no can talk on why President Buhari no give National Assembly letter to hand over government to carry give the Vice President as in the travel come out from inside the country. Now this one will carry us into the next story where we get. For inside the National Assembly, President of the Senate will be Ahmed Lawan. He don't want to see Nigerians now plus including foreigners. They will hardly invest to support the economy if the government no tackle matter of security with the warriors for inside the country. In, con the, in beyond this one, after them yarn on top matter of national importance, where B Senate Senator Olale Kon Mustafa been raised on Wednesday for inside their meeting need for security agencies to intervene in the increased rate of kidnapping in the riverine areas of Ugu East and Sura districts and securing the waterways. The Senate notes with urgent and grave concern the recent increase in the activities of criminal syndicates who specialize in kidnapping and militancy in and around the riverine communities in Ugu East and Sura district, particularly Odeomi, Makun, and Iwokwin in Ugu Waterside local government area of Ugu State. Concerned that the activities of these criminals have caused law-abiding residents of coastal communities of the affected areas to flee their communities and livelihood out of fear. Silas and the Yan, the Senate President, constitute talks, make them budget more money for securities agencies them. We go help them to fight banditry, kidnapping, insurgency, and other criminal activities them with the shelly for inside the country. As now the matter be, him say it go make sense to create national emergency centers for Nigeria, where be say it go help make them day easy to fight criminal activities for inside Nigeria. A better and more operable and result-oriented approach to fighting kidnapping and the insecurity we face. And we have insisted here that no amount of resources will be too much because we need to secure our people, we need to secure this country. It will remain a pipe dream if we continue to ask for people to come to Nigeria to invest. Actually, even those inside Nigeria may not invest properly once the security situation remains very dicey. So this is something that we have to do together with the executive arm of government. Stay for inside the matter, the Senate President now can give sense stock. Say make the Office of the National Security Advisor send different types of drone for better surveillance. And we shall run, come out, enter the next story where we get. The Nigerian Union of Journalists, that one a joint body of journalists, whether they call NUJ, and the United Nations Education, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, where be UNESCO. They don't gather to read people now, where be journalists for inside Abuja, as part of the activities to mark the 2019 day to end the badness treatment where BC journalists them they get. The day where BC then they celebrate this uh, one now, uh, every 2nd of November for every year. This one has to draw attention for some kind bad treatment where BC journalists and media workers they receive. Our Wazobia Max TV to represent Philip Mwili, he gets more updates on top of this one where they happen for the event. And we go join her now to give us gist about what they happen for there. <laughs> Yeah, good afternoon, Ada. Good um, afternoon. Make you just sharply talk to us about how it will be for inside the event. Yes, uh, thank you. Good afternoon. If you look my back, you will see an insider hall, nine insider journalists gather this afternoon for Abuja. And uh, the, just like you talk, the thing when they do today, now that day when United Nations recognized when they call International Day to end impunity for crime against journalists. You know, say, now 2nd of November, every year, now they celebrate, but today, United Nations uh, Scientific and Cultural Organization, uh, UNESCO, 
and the Nigerian Union of Journalists, Gather Journalists for Abuja, made them come sit down, come talk to see how we go end those crimes. Those things when they pre pre prevent journalists from um, doing their work. And the theme of the event today, na keeping safe. I deal with the chairman of the Nigerian Union of Journalists um, for FCT Council, when be comrade Emmanuel Obeche. Um, Mr. Obeche, tell us what in be those crimes when they affect uh, uh, journalists, those things when people they do when they affect journalists from carrying out their job. Well, uh, you say um, government and uh, people when they very powerful. They do plenty, plenty bad things against um, journalists. Um, one of those things we say they go harass them when they do reports. They go go make sometimes they go go to their offices. They go close down their office. Sometimes they go go to their house. They go go carry them for night. Sometimes they go meet. They go even go threaten their family members. Say if they continue. To the report, the bad parties we got they do, or these powerful people, these people in uh, get plenty of money, we get plenty of influence. Like now, we get journalists that we don't arrest, we they don't detain them. If you remember, um, not too long ago, we get one journalist that they call Jones Abiri, uh, we people where they call DSS, they carry them for over two years, nobody will know where he did. For now, we get journalists for cross river where they say it they plot to overthrow the governor for that state, treason. You know, um, sometimes the government go meet employers, make them sack the journalists from work. You understand? Honestly, so, uh, Mr. Beche, uh, I know say it plenty, plenty crimes do they when then they do against journalists. Now, every year for November 2nd, we they gather to, you know, talk about this thing. Exactly. And even you know, like I say, the more than they talk about and the more those impunity for crime, those impunity for the crime when they do against journalists, they continue. What well, causes this? What it causes, we say, you know, say, um, government and all these party people, they don't want to make their report of what it they do. And as um, the space, the technology, they help journalists in their report. And as also, the crime against journalists, they increase. You know, from government and government no go rest and all these powerful people they no go rest simply because we they report on them because journalists never no tired to the report government no go tired to the harass to intimidate and to have to even kill sometimes you know journalists the only government they harass no we not talk to the only government i say powerful individuals you know organizations they people they when they say they get money they get influence uh, you know, so those sort of people must continue because bad thing no they finish now. So if bad thing no finish, our journalists no stop to the report. These people no go stop to the okay. report. Now, thank you. Very last one now, very quick. Just yes. tell us what will be your message to journalists and government as we mark this day. No, our, our message is simply to journalists. We say make they no tire until we get a better country. And to government, we want to beg government to make they allow journalists to do their work in peace. Now that uh, way now you go feel guaranteed transparency and accountability for government. Thank you very much. That now uh, uh, the chairman of Nigerian Union of Journalists, FCT, uh, Comrade Emmanuel Obeche, and I talked to us this afternoon. Thank you very much, Philip, for that report where you carry come. And now this one now will carry us into the next story where we get for today. Now, as a Wonge government don't put mind now to promote corruption from inside the country, they, they host one gathering for inside Abuja to do more on top of the movement of this anti-corruption matter where B say it they worry. This town hall meeting we hear say the thing they happen for inside Abuja, and now today will be Thursday, now in this one they hold. And we still hear seeing a strong, strong people where B say they get mouth for inside government, now in day for inside that town hall meeting. We go sharply join our Wazobia TV to repress him. We'll be Solomon and Dahi for inside that place. But as the matter be, be like say we go waka come out. Then when we come back, we go still join them. For inside the next story, sharp, sharp. On top of body matter, the need now for Nigerians to put eye on top of the issues where we say concern environmental health danger. Now it be the top to read now as plenty of stakeholders them don't come out to come gather to talk about different different things where we say them go do to bring solution for environmental health danger for inside we country. Now the matter where we say they want to sit down about be this inside Abuja. 
And at this environmental health conference where BC them, they do every year. They come come this time called NIMAM, the National Health Advancement Conference and Awards. And we see here say, now the Help Clean Foundation, where they partner with ministries of environment and health, now them come organize them. As the matter will be, we will join John Emmanuel, will be our to person, to give us gist about waiting they happen for inside the air. But when they come back sharply, when we come back, then we go join our Tory people to Yan. Uh, John, c'est qu'on est là, oui. Abi, what do you mean connected? Uh, Bluetooth and the call is not yet.
Welcome back. And before we've been going on break, we've been hearing about the Environmental Health Conference. Where we say they go on for inside Abuja. Now, make we chapali join our Tori person, John Emmanuel, to give us story of where did they do this conference and what did they talk about for inside there. John, you could just chapali tell us where did they host the event and what did they really talk about for inside the conference. Yeah, uh, yeah, this event we will talk about now for sure. I think also the event take place on the uh, issue of environment. Maybe the first time we we'll discuss the issue of environment for Nigeria. It's just that now issue will be said is supposed to be continue to be hammered around because Nigeria has to take issue of issues of environment very, very carefully. Now, what did they talk about mostly now? How Nigerians they dispose waste? You get many things where they have way for this part, part of the world. We are assuming that God they in control of everything now. You get it, what we call climate change. This climate change now, it don't affect so many things for our environment. The way rain they fall, the way sun they shine. So, and all these issues for this part of the world, we the assume say, now God, now they create all these things. Now, the rising sea level now is becoming alarming. Just in first day, when they talk about the tsunami, uh, or when they talk about World Tsunami Day. Uh, now, if we look, begin to take issues of environment serious, this, our own environment, will consume us. Now, the whole way clean foundation, uh, this foundation they do today, we say, make Nigerians begin to take how they dispose waste, how they take uh, relate with their environment, very conscious, so that they know what to do it to make this environment to consume them. Now, apart from calling on Nigerians on these issues, they are calling on government as well, because not every issue where ordinary citizens will be handled. They get the issues where we say they relate to government as well. It's just like emission, Gas flaring and other technological and industrial waste where they enter our environment. This one now, they expect ordinary Nigeria to go to take care of this kind of matter. So now, government supposed to bring policies on ground. We go make sure so they regulate the way when Nigerians they use any issues, uh, any properties or things where they contribute to global warming or they deplete the ozone layer. So this one now, now the responsibility of government. And finally, sure, after this uh, uh, one day dialogue, we just they, 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 we, they pray say, and uh, the hope is that. That they will come up with concrete policies and uh, solutions where they will give government and make government with it uh, implement so that issues of environment in Nigeria will be minimized. Okay, thank you very much. That's now John Emmanuel to person. A uh, way day for the environmental health conference, where did they do for inside Abuja? We help Clean Foundation organize for this year. Make we move on now, enter business news. Make you not go anywhere. <music> And for inside the business, Minister of Communications and Digital Economy will be Dr. Issa Pantami. He talks, say them no, they go back at all at all. Sake of the other way, be say them give Nigerian Communications Commission that na NCC. Say make them make sure, say, mobile telephone network providers reduce the cost of data for inside the country. Dr. Pantami being young this one on Wednesday, I seen they answer plenty questions from state house to re people. And all those questions where we say they did answer, in the answer, now after the Federal Executive Council meeting for inside presidential villa for inside Abuja. As it matter be now, you can explain say the order they necessary to protect the interest of Nigerians where we say they pay, pay plenty money for data compared to waiting other African countries they pay. Network operators came to me with some complaints about certain things that government We evaluated the price of data in all African countries. We discovered that there is need for us to make sure that the price is reduced. We will not allow our masses, innocent Nigerians that have been very supportive to government in any way to be unjustly cheated. And it is part of the process we say, okay, let us sit down and see how the price can be reviewed. And this is in order to protect the interests of the masses. Still on top of the matter, Dr. Pantami still had say all the things where we say concern matter where the telecom service provider has been raised. Say government, they address them. Network operators came to me with some complaints about certain things that government needs to do. And we are still working on that, like the issue of vandalization of their facilities, which is worrisome, the issue of right of way, which is also worrisome, 
classifying their facilities as part of critical infrastructure of the country. In all these issues that the table before us, we are working with all federal public institutions that are involved to make sure that the environment is very comfortable for them to do their business. Make we remember, say them give NCC order to do things where BC go make service providers to stop the illegal deduction of data of subscribers within five days. The minister also directs the board and management of the NCC to make a sharply address some pending issues and to expand the penetration of three gigabyte and a 4G network for inside 3G and 4G network for inside Nigeria. And on top of the next business story, Kano State Governor Abdullah Higanduje, we hear say they present the state budget or the 2020 budget estimate of the state to the State House of Assembly for consideration and passage. As the matter be, Wazobia Max TV to repersing Dumebi or Dimegu, he did for Kano State House of Assembly and then go join us live to tell us what they happen for them. Okay, you make you sharply tell us waiting they happen for uh, Kanu on top of the 2020 budget where we say the governor just present. All right, a Kano state governor, Dr. Abdullah Omar Ganduje, he never to say, just like immediately like this, now he take present 2020 appropriation bill, now the 2020 budget for Kano state. He talks said the title of this budget, now budget for sustainable development. And on top of this one, so he said the place where they will pay more attention now for the education side and even the health. He said in the call education, because of the way we say out of school children, now be almost children, take full load for inside Kano, and it no make sense. So he talks that they won't focus the budget on education to take back all these children may they enter school so that at least they will go from there they enter the state on top of the education side now the budget money for education now 49.9 billion naira while we say the one for health will full and for bad now 30.7 billion naira as he come present and finish now so the state house members can tell and say okay then i go do their best to see then give the budget accelerated hearing and they go here and sharp sharp so that they go to do everything so that better they will enter the state Okay, thank you very much, Dumebi, for that one way you carry come from inside Kano. Make we sharply come out from inside business, run, enter sports news. Make you not go anywhere. And for inside sports now, we hear say the Confederation of African Football, they don't pick a Senegalese uh, referee, will be Issa C as the referee for the 2021 African Cup of Nations qualifying match between Nigeria and Benin Republic for inside Uyo. This one nine day inside the talk paper where we say the Nigerian Football Federation carry come on Wednesday. The talk paper yan say no how Bengora go assist Issa as assistant referee one, while El Haji Abdul Aziz Goye go be assistant referee two, and Fatal Thion go be the fourth official for inside the match where B C then go play for Godswill Akbabio Stadium from 5 p.m. on November 13th. And we see yes after the match now the Super Eagles go fly to Maseru for the second clash with the Crocodiles of Lesotho where they go play for inside the Lesotho Stadium from 5 p.m. on November 17th. My people, this is not all the Tory way we carry come for this afternoon. But before we go, make we still look our top to read them again for this afternoon. <music> Federal Executive Council don't approve contracts for Bida Sachi Peroko Road. And Presidency Talks say Bege no day between Buhari and Oshibanjo. Federal government they host workshop to move anti-corruption campaign for inside the country. And CAF don't appoint a Senegalese referee for the match between Super Eagles and Benin Republic. Thank you, say you sit down and watch us on top as it take a happen for Inside Wazobia Max TV. My name na Adate Omupe. Una good afternoon. To enjoy more of this our Ugonke videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.